shop. Today we're getting ready to assemble what we can on the LS3 for the Trans Am so we can lower it down into the hood area that we've been preparing for ever it seems like. All right so we bought the LS3 um, probably a year ago been gathering parts along the way waiting on lots of parts 6.2 liter. All right so to put this LS motor to attach that bell housing to this turbo 350 we had to cut off the original BOP bell housing and I did that in a previous video you can go back and check it out um, don't forget to hit the like and uh, subscribe button please that thumbs up is uh, very helpful for me so if you don't mind hitting that that thumbs up give me a like if uh, you get anything out of this kind of content I, I really appreciate it all right so we cut the bell housing off. We put a Ultra Bell on for an LS. Uh, that thing's ready to go. It's sitting in there. All I gotta do is slide the torque converter onto the input shaft. Um, and in order to hook a Turbo 350 to an LS, you have to have the right flywheel and adapter. So we started off, I bought a, a kit from uh, Brian Tooley Racing. Um, it's the Brian Tooley Racing Flex Plate Adapter Kit. BR, BTR 21399. It came with GM bolts that have flex plate bolts. Have the little Loctite in them in the threads already. I may put another drop on there. Nothing worse than a flywheel coming loose. Flex plate comes with a flex plate and it came with this adapter that I've already um, tapped in. All it does is slide on, but I had to use a little rubber mallet to give it a little love to walk it onto the end of the crank. So this, without the spacer, that flat flywheel or flex plate uh, hits the back. Um, and also I've been told it won't work that's the flywheel you or flex plate excuse me that you have to have to use to make the torque converter work properly you can use uh and this is a 4l80 flex plate uh, which you could buy anywhere um i just prefer to use a name brand something from a name brand company that's uh deals with this stuff quite a lot i didn't want to use a AutoZone special or anything like that uh because i don't want to be taking this thing back out to change a flex plate because it's cracked i have had to do flex plates on customers cars in the past with like 4l60s uh with them cracking and uh rattling and uh i don't want to have to yank transmission right back out of this thing or uh, which it wouldn't probably wouldn't happen immediately anyway so if you use a 4l60 flex plate it has a concaved deal where it's not flat like this it's it's actually concaved in the center um so one side sticks out further than the other and you don't need the that adapter because it, it make it automatically makes the flex plate stick off the the back of the crank the problem with running the 4l60 flex plate is they're weak and they don't have the bolt holes for the 350 turbo 350 turbo 400 power glide torque converter the 4l80 flex plate does so i don't have to do any modifications to this the adapter's already tapped on as you can see it says engine side so we'll slide this on the engine side. We'll put our new bolts in. And we'll torque that bad boy down. That is a very tight fit. I have slid it onto this adapter. And it's, uh, I'm hoping it's it, this little lip right here. This little, right, this deal right there. It, it slides on until then, until it gets to, to that. And then it doesn't want to go by hand so i'm hoping pulling it down with the bolts evenly it will kind of create like a press fit on that we'll let you know if that doesn't work 
um, these little these little ears are just uh, I think they press on to that so we'll find out I've got quite a bit of junk I've got to move out of the way before I can get my hoist in the engine hoisted over into position as you can see we got all kinds of junk we got our heaters out still um, I may go run and get some propane here in just a little bit because they're calling for snow in the morning here I mean it's been like in the 70s um, and now we're, we're getting one more little touch of winter I've got a fire going in the wood burning stove already I piled up a, a load of wood in here just keeping the coals good and going, good and hot for right now. Building a coal bed. Um, I've got it up to 70 in here right now, but mainly because it's warm outside. It's like 60 degrees outside. But I want to be able to continue to work. Uh, I was going to go to a, uh, the Southern Gassers race in Reynolds, Georgia tomorrow, but it's supposed to be like 20 and 30 mile an hour winds and the high of 43 degrees. So. I'm not going to be attending that one. I'm not going to, it's like two and a half hour drive south for me. Uh, I don't want to spend the fuel um, right now to run down there and then just be miserable. And um, the cars, who knows, a lot of them might not show. Uh, a lot of them may be having to drive through this snow, like Tennessee's getting snow. I think Crossville's getting six inches. Um, I don't think we're getting much. We'll probably just do it. We, they're calling for snow for like three hours in the morning but it's going to be in the 30s so this this place loses heat rapidly so i'm trying to keep this place warm where i can get this engine installed um tomorrow uh, or possibly tonight i may even do it tonight but you can see i've got all this junk got an air conditioning machine all these well most of these boxes are for this so we'll just rearrange all this stuff slide it over this way slide that junk this way I got to put these pullers and all this stuff back on my shelves over there. Um, I jump from one project to another, to the other, to the other. Uh, I mean, I, I bounce from project to project to project and I'm here by myself working. So I tend to um, not clean up in between projects sometimes because I can literally bounce between two or three in a day. Uh, so this place gets trashed out really quickly. I'm lacking a shelving system in here, but um, that's for a future video. I want to build a mezzanine in here and get some shelves up top. I want to build from this, when this deer head is on this post to that post over there, a mezzanine to the back wall. Um, we have future plans for expansion of this shop, but, um, those are far in the future. All right, so we're going to attempt to uh, get this thing pressed on here. Engine side going towards the engine. So the flywheel slides on to that first ring mark and then it stops. A flex plate. I always call it a flywheel. Spin it, line up our, all our holes right, start all the bolts, and I'll just evenly tighten that down until that bad boy presses on. Properly. And I looked the to torque specs up, I haven't done that yet. And we'll torque it down. I said I may put a drop of thread locker on that, but I'll just let the factory thread locker do its job. All right, so I decided I'm going to put just a touch of thread locker on it. Um, so my can ease my mind. That's not a touch, David. <laughs> it's all right. It's blue thread locker. This is removable thread locker. Try 
trying to give it a touch and not a big old squeeze. So it doesn't take much. I had a car when I was in high school. My son's in here listening too, so Caleb's in here learning. Uh, but I had a car in high school out of 77 Malibu, and I, I bought a, a 350, it had a Camo 305 and broke the timing chain in it. Um, so I bought a 350 that my buddy's dad had in a, in a Camaro. He had a 79 Camaro, he got on trade, he didn't want the car, had a bad transmission in it, but it had a hot little motor in it. Had a Urson cam, roller rockers, single plane intake. I mean, it was, it was it had Chevy heads on it, but it, everything else was, it was a pretty hot little motor for a 16 year old, 17 year old kid. And we, we put it in and uh, I drove it around for a few months and it developed a knock. And um, of course we didn't know a whole lot, but we were learning pretty good. Uh, I put the engine in myself and with some of my buddies' help. Well, the, the engine developed a knocking noise and I thought it was rod knocking. So I quit driving the car for a while and then uh, I started working at this firewood place or I had been working at this firewood place on and off and this mechanic guy kept, in front of theirs kept coming down there and we're, I, he asked me what happened in my car and I told him and he said, bring it by the shop. Um, he, he said, let's make sure it's not a, fl a flex plate. So we put it up on the lift in a shop and he used a stethoscope and the knock was coming from mainly towards the back and not from the block. So he was like, you got a, you got a loose flex plate. So I pulled the transmission back um, and the torque converter and sure enough, the bolts had come loose on the flex plate and it was allowing the flex plate to wiggle a little bit and rattle and it sounded like a, a rod knocking. So that's why I'm, I'm pretty adamant on putting Loctite on them, make sure the Loctite's good, because I don't want to run through those scenarios again. Who wants to pull their transmission back? Uh, it didn't cancel yet, but it um, high is 43 tomorrow and 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. I, I just don't think it's going to be a good turnout or a good race, and I don't want to waste two and a half hours driving down there. Bad. You have to come all the way back. Yeah, I don't want to waste my day. I'd rather be working on this than uh, standing around being miserable at that race. Not a lot. What's that? Got the some yeah, I got a lot of junk to move around, but I need to be cleaning this crap up anyway. So. Please help. I'm looking. Okay. All right, I'm just going to keep snugging these. Try to walk this thing on here. I think it'll just press itself on. effortless walking itself on. I just couldn't push it on by hand. It was it had me worried a little bit that it was the wrong setup. Because this is my first LS swap. I've worked on a bunch of LSs, but I've never swapped one into an older car. And these engines have been out for since 1999. I've worked on a bunch of them. Never bolted one 
to a turbo 350 or a 400, and that's what we're about to do. All right, we're gonna look up the torque specs, and we'll torque that thing down. So I printed off off my all data program. Uh, I just looked up a, a 2013 Corvette with a 6.2 liter, and got the torque sequence the pattern they want you to torque it in, and they want you to do it in three steps: 15, 37, and final of 74 foot-pound of torque. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. As long as you're doing it in a crisscross pattern, you're good. That way you don't torque one side down uh, and get it all out of whack, you know, cattywampus or something, or over torque one side of the threads. It'll, sometimes that'll cause you to get it cocked and pull the threads out on another. So anytime you're tightening bolts, torquing bolts, for those of you who don't, don't know, you should do it in a crisscross pattern of some sort. So I got it, I got to set it uh, 15 pounds for a first go around here. Oh, looks like I've already, already got it at 15 pounds. All right, now we'll go up to 37. Click, Caleb? Yeah. Let's go here. Click is where you said at 37 pounds, it gives you that click when you hit. Um, so now we'll go on up to 74, hopefully. The motor won't want to spin around on me too much. I'm going to have to put a screwdriver in it or something to hold it. Seven there. One, two, three, four. Seventy-four. Okay. somewhere you can wedge a screwdriver in where you're not going to hurt anything. Seven. Seven. Double check everything.